Hello everyone, and welcome to a continuation of our state, U.S. state history. And today we're talking about my home state. Even though I'm currently living in Virginia, I consider Georgia as my home state uh, for a lot of reasons. And, uh, yeah, the Peach State. Now this is one of those, this is our first southern state. And... <clears throat> As such, we will be talking a little bit about the war between the states. Um, anyway, so let's get into it. Here's a look at the flag, and this is the first flag I'm going to talk about. Um, as we saw with the first three states, they were all seals on a bed sheet, and even though the state flag has the state seal, <coughs> it is not the state seal on a bed sheet. Instead, this flag has 13 stars, one for each of the original 13 colonies, or 13 states, of which it was, of course, the fourth state. It, however, takes a lot of design cues from the actual Confederate national flag, or at least the first Confederate flag, which is, of course, the three bars, red, white, red, in this order with a blue uh, square here, the Confederate flag had 11 stars, signifying, of course, signifying the 11 states that seceded. Um, Georgia adds two more stars to make it U.S.-centric, and just for good measure, stuck their seal in there. Um, that said, it is better than the previous two flags. <laughs> it is much better than those. Um, <laughs> yeah, so, moving on... <laughs> It is a 24th state by area with a little under 60,000 square miles for U.S. Georgia units. And that would be 153,000, almost 154,000 uh, square kilometers if you live in the Georgia that's in the Caucasus. It is the 8th state by population with just over 10 million people. And those 10 million people live in 159 counties. It became the fourth state on January 2nd, 1788. Its highest point is called Brasstown Bald at 4784 feet high. And the largest city and capital are, is both Atlanta. Some presidential voting history. Uh, you're going to find out that this state tends to vote for the candidate that is more rural, more conservative. Uh, this is a very conservative state. Even the Democrats are conservative. Uh, look at Zell Miller, for example, um, with a few exceptions, and we'll talk about him. Uh, voted Washington twice, then Democrat-Republican every single year. Voted for William Crawford in 1824. Then it voted Democrat. Then it voted for a guy named Hugh White, one of four Whigs that they ran that year. Then it voted Whig, and then it began a swing state period where it voted Whig, then Democrat, then Whig. And then it voted Democrat till the Civil War, or the War Between States, whatever you want to call it. Just don't call it the War of Northern Aggression, because it wasn't that. Though you will hear people in Georgia call it the War of Northern Aggression. <laughs> Unironically, too. That said, I love this state, okay, even the kookiness. Um, but he voted for Breckenridge in 1860, and so far that's the only Democrat that vote that we've covered that has been voted for in 1860. I'll talk about which Democrat later. Civil War. It seceded from the U.S. and joined the Confederate States in 1861 over fears a new Republican-led government would abolish slavery. Major battles that, that were fought in the state include Chickamauga, Kennesaw Mountain, and Atlanta. In 1864, General Sherman burned half the state to the ground as part of his march to the sea. There's a reason you will hear people say, fuck Sherman. In, in Georgia, and yeah, it, the state of Georgia has some complicated feelings about this war. 
It became the last state readmitted into the United States in 1870, though it participated in the election of 1868. So I'm a little sketchy on that one. Um, because a few other states were disallowed from participating in that election. Um, but, okay. Presidential voting history continued. It didn't participate in 1864. Quite obvious. Uh, voted Democrat uh, from 1868 to 1960. Uh, he voted Republican in 1964. For And that was specifically for Barry Goldwater, who was uber conservative. Um, a lot of People will portray this meaning that Goldwater was racist, which he wasn't. They're, you just read up on that. Voted for George Wallace in, eight, in 1968, which that was because of racism, let's be honest here. Uh, voted Republican in 1972. Then voted Democrat until 1980. And in 84, it voted for, uh, for Reagan. <clears throat> the reason it voted Democrat in 76 and 80 was because of native son Jimmy Carter. Uh, 1988 uh, also voted Demo or Republican. Um, and this begins its kind of swing state period, which is weird. Uh, then it voted Democrat in 1992, and then it voted Republican since then. And it's voted Republican ever since, uh, putting up a solid 20 years. <clears throat> so, it is, for the most part, a swing state, um, except for a few periods, but it tends to vote for the more conservative of the two candidates. Some fun facts. Atlanta is home to CNN, Delta, Coca-Cola, Home Depot, and others, and that's partially because it's one of, the, one of, if not the best state to run a business in. It has some great economic development outside of business, um, some bet and some of the best labor conditions, surprisingly. Uh, it has the world's busiest airport in Hartsfield Jackson, otherwise known as ATL, which is why Atlanta is sometimes referred to as the ATL. Savannah has the fourth largest port in the United States. I don't know why I wrote North America. And it is the fastest growing as well. And it's called the Port of Savannah, so it's not located in Savannah proper, but it's called the Port of Savannah. Atlanta does have a growing film industry, and a lot of stuff you will see at the end of shows that were filmed or produced in Georgia. It will say Made in Georgia. Um, the, it is the world's leading pecan producer. And peaches are another export, though... No one from Georgia is willing to admit that they aren't the largest peach producer in the United States, with that being held by South Carolina, which we'll get to. But we don't. We pretend South Carolina doesn't exist for those for that reason. I'm slightly kidding there. Some fun facts continued, or not so fun facts. Uh, ignore the part that says City of Trenton Incorporated 1854 on that flag. Uh, it had quite possibly the worst state flag ever conceived from 2000 to 2002, which was somehow worse than the 1956 to 2000 flag, with uh, the one on the left being the 2000 flag and the 1956 flag being the one on the right. Seriously, though. Both, the reason why that, the one on the right is bad is because of the whole, you know, battle flag of the Army of Northern Virginia stuck on, stuck on it. Um, but, yeah, Georgia's flag, but the one on the left is just bad for all the reasons it's bad. Um, <laughs> number one, it's a seal on a bed sheet. Number two, it has flags within the flag. And you could even argue that it has flags within a flag within a flag. <laughs> it's just bad. <laughs> the one on the right, you know, if it wasn't for the unfortunate part that it's Confederate related, it would actually be a semi oak it would actually be a somewhat decent design. Anyway. 
A not fun fact is that there's a popular myth that Georgia sports are cursed. Um, think about the national championship for college football this past year, and of course the whole 28-3 to debacle from Super Bowl 51. Uh, and a lot of this blame is attributed to the 1996 Olympics that were held in Atlanta, which started off... Real in a, in in <laughs> in a really really bad way with a bomb threat uh, with a bomb being planted in Centennial Park in downtown Atlanta. Um, that while it was discovered, it went off and thankfully it only killed two people, it, but it did injure 111 others. Um, some famous people. Zero vice presidents, but he had one president, Jimmy Carter. Uh, however, Woodrow Wilson, FDR, and Dwight Eisenhower all have connections to the state. Um, so they are listed as being from Georgia, but I don't really count them. FDR has the best claim out of the three, uh, because he actually maintained a second home in the state. Uh, it's called the Little White House, if you have a chance to go, seriously do it. Uh, Ray Charles... Is from here, and he's the guy who wrote the song "Georgia on My Mind," which is the state song. Um, the Allman Brothers Band is from this state. Jim Brown, the Hall of Fame running back, and in my opinion, greatest running back of all time, as well as humanitarian. Seriously, look at some of the work he's done regarding the inner cities of uh, just everywhere. And you'll realize this guy actually is a good person, um, and that he should be respected more for his work uh, as a humanitarian than for being a good football player. Uh, Ty Cobb, of course, is from Georgia. The Zach Brown Band, I, I'm just throwing them in there because I like them, so deal with it. Uh, more rappers than you can t shake a stick at her from the state. Uh, the founder of Chick-fil-A, S. Troop Kathy, is from Georgia. <clears throat> Famous people continue. Jeff Foxworthy, the guy who says you might be a redneck if uh, your tool case only has WD-40 and duct tape. Uh, John C. Fremont, the Republican candidate for president in 1856. And a notable explorer. Evander Holyfield, the boxer, who has a giant mansion right next to the high school that I uh, graduated. Evander Holyfield. Wait, I just talked about him. Uh, Martin Luther King Jr. Uh, very, very... MLK is from Atlanta, uh, as, as are a lot of the Civil Rights Movement uh, people. Newt Gingrich, of course, the former Speaker of the House, and very famous. Zell Miller, a senator from Georgia, as well as their former governor, who helped found a scholarship, and uh, which I'm not sure if it's still... I'm not sure if it still bears his name, but I know I received the Hope Scholarship when I graduated. Um, and I forgot to include him on this list, but the but as of 2017, the second fastest person in the world, Christian Coleman, who I went to high school with, is from Georgia. And that concludes today's uh, little state history for you. See you guys next time.